Can you see what I'm doing here? I'm clearing the snow from the road. You might describe this kind of task as exhausting or tiring. You can also say that it is backbreaking. A backbreaking job or task is one that makes you feel very exhausted. And the next day you might have lots of aches and pains around your body. I hope you don't have any aches and pains today because it's Sunday afternoon here in the UK and this is Live English. Dooby dooby doo, yes, we are back again. What a busy day I have had. Oh my goodness. First of all, can I say hi, everybody? This is Mr. Duncan in England. How are you today? Are you okay? I hope so. Are you happy? I really, really hope you are happy today because. Well, first of all, can I just say that today I have had a very busy day. I unfortunately got up quite late today. I was up an hour late, so I should have got up at nine o'clock today. But sadly, I got up at after. Can you believe it? After. Ten o'clock. I feel very, very embarrassed about that. But I am here and coming a little bit later on, Mr. Steve is here. He isn't on camera at the moment, but he's, he's going to shout hello. Say hello, Steve. Hello. <laughs> now, I've just realised that I haven't set Mr. My Mr. Steve's microphone up yet. Go, oh, don't do it, Steve. Don't touch it. Don't touch the microphone. Don't do anything. Don't touch anything. No, don't. Please don't touch anything, Steve. Okay. <laughs> Steve is interfering with my equipment. And if there's one thing I don't like, it's when people interfere with my equipment. Do you feel the same way? So Mr. Steve will be here later on. I hope you can hear me OK, because I think there might be a slight problem with the sound today, because it appears that there isn't a level, a level coming through on the sound. So I hope you can hear me OK. If you can hear me, please let me know. I might have to do a couple of changes, you see, whilst I'm talking to you. This is very strange. <laughs> I had set everything up, but sometimes things do go slightly wrong. So I hope you can hear me OK. If you can hear me, please let me know. Please say, Mr. Duncan, we can hear you perfectly. And then I will be very, very happy. <laughs> The sound is OK. Good. Yes. Now we can get on with the show. Well, first of all, I've had a very busy week, not least of all because I've been unwell. I haven't been very well this week. Ah. And do you know why? Do you know why I've been ill? It's because of you. I've been outside in the cold all week doing things just for you. And because of that, I, I had a very sore throat and I almost lost my voice. I thought I was going to lose my voice. I got very, very worried that I was about to lose my voice. But for, fortunately, I haven't. I've managed to keep my sore throat away. I, I bought these amazing tablets they're like they're like sweets and you take them when you are feeling unwell so if you have a sore throat or a cough which i had so i took some of these and it seems to have done the trick it seems to have cured my problem also i have a nice hot cup of coffee here today look at this <gasps> a beautiful lovely hot cup of coffee lovely delicious to keep me going mm. lovely as i mentioned mr steve is coming later we have him live in his little grotto 
he will be sitting in the corner of the room and can you see we have the christmas tree now so we have a tree behind me we have some lovely tinsel on the microphone so everything is looking very seasonal very Christmassy because there are only eight days to go before Christmas and don't forget next week we are here on Christmas Eve and I have a little surprise for you next week we are going to be doing something very unusual next week that's all I'm saying <laughs> something very unusual in the kitchen so I hope you will join me next Sunday it will be Christmas Eve and of course the question everyone is asking what was the weather like this morning well there it is there is the view from my window this morning and as you can see it was very very misty very damp and you may have noticed that the snow has disappeared the snow appears to have gone although having said that there is still some snow in the garden because we had a lot of snow last week quite a lot of snow fell we had a lot of snowfall on friday and then of course we had some on Sunday last Sunday so this time last week we were under lots and lots of snow but this week as you can see from the view this morning most of the snow has gone however if we look down come on can we point the camera downwards please I want to go down onto the grass I want to show everyone <laughs> the, the the here we here we go we're going now yes and there you can see there is some snow still left most of it has melted most of the snow has dissolved I love that word dissolved it has vanished so there is still a little bit of snow on the lawn but most of it has disappeared talking of snow of course we can't talk about snow without showing you some of the lovely scenery that we had here last week it was absolutely gorgeous there we are in the car driving a couple of days after the snow fell and there you can see there is lots of snow on the edge of the road but fortunately thank goodness the roads were cleared pretty quickly and there is another shot just to show you how much snow we had last week look at that we had so much snow last weekend and there is another lovely view look at all of that snow and you can see that virtually no one has walked on that snow we call snow that hasn't been walked on virgin snow so if snow hasn't been walked on if the snow has not been disturbed we can say that it is virgin snow which means it hasn't been walked on so we had a lot of snow last week and I'm not sure if you had snow where you are but I know across Europe many people did have snowfall including here but as you saw earlier the snow has now gone look at that isn't that beautiful that was taken during one of my snowy walks last week isn't that lovely it looks like something from Narnia <laughs> do you know the story of Narnia the lion the witch and the wardrobe it looks a little bit like like Narnia I keep expecting Mr Tom's to come round the corner at any moment and an, another view across the countryside here in Shropshire and here you can see some cars that were abandoned they were left at the side of the road because the snow was falling so heavily they actually left their cars 
at the side of the road look at that hmm and there is much Wenlock town center and there is the old clock and for those who were watching my live stream on Tuesday I was out and about in much Wenlock yes last Tuesday for the first time ever I actually did a live stream from the center of much Wenlock and it is available on my YouTube channel there it is there is a small excerpt from my live stream and this was actually done live on Tuesday did you see the live stream well if you missed it don't worry because it is available on my YouTube channel you can watch it it is available and also there are subtitles as well so there is a little sneak peek at last Tuesday's live stream and you can see in the distance there are people clearing the snow away there was a lot of snowfall last week and the local people all join together and they help each other to clear away the snow isn't that lovely why is much Wenlock called much Wenlock it all has a connection with the old abbey because the abbey the original abbey was white and Wenlock means white abbey or white church lots of people on the live chat lots of people wanting to join in today and just to prove it we have a new feature where you can actually see the live chat I'm not joking there is now a feature that will allow everyone to see the live chat and there it is there is the live chat you can see that the live chat at the moment is very busy this is a selection of the messages coming through live right now on YouTube can you believe it thank you very much for your messages a big hello to everyone hello to Julie Olga Ute by the way thank you very much Ute for your donation on PayPal this week thank you very much for that I do appreciate it a big bonjour from France Tomek is here also Fidan and Anna Hung Trung is here as well also we have Tural Tural and Mohammed Jahez business oh apparently he is a business manager oh very good also Tias Tia is here nice to see you again and also we have Driss Patricia wow so many people at the moment so a big hello to everyone chatting on the live stream today you can see the messages are coming up yes there is another town nearby called little Wenlock you are right so there you can see the live messages coming through today lots of people Thomas we also have Morsel and Nanu hello to Na Nanu I love your name by the way it reminds me of a TV show called Mork and Mindy and there was a character who used to say nanu nanu <laughs> played by the late great robin williams of course true says hello from vietnam hello to you as well also basamet says good evening everyone so your live chat messages are now on the screen live as well so that is a new feature apparently according to Bella it is very hot in Brazil and how are you well I'm okay but unfortunately during the week I was feeling a little bit unwell a little bit under the weather because I'd spent a lot of time outside filming 
and streaming live and unfortunately I did develop a slight sore throat so because I spent so much time outside filming just for you I actually made myself unwell can you believe it so we are just eight days away from Christmas for those who celebrate Christmas can I wish you a happy season have a happy Christmas I hope you have a super time wherever you are celebrating and of course we will be here live next Sunday on Christmas Eve yes I will be here and also Mr Steve will be here live next Sunday I'm not joking thank you very much for all of your messages we have lots of things coming today also during the week whilst the snow was still on the ground I had to do something for my little furry friends and of course my little feathery friends as well I had to go outside to make sure that the birds had plenty of food so what I did I went into the garden and I fed the birds of course at this time of the year the birds find it very difficult to find any food they have difficulty finding food and there you can see I am walking through the snow in my garden look how deep the snow was it was up to my knees so first of all I had to clear the snow from the bird feeders look at all of that snow so that snow fell last week so I had to clean the bird feeders and then I put lots of food in them lots of sunflower hearts and of course some peanuts as well and there I am going off to the back garden look how deep the snow is <laughs> I've never seen so much snow for such a long time and here I am now in the back garden once again I have to clear the snow off the bird feeders because there is so much snow Mr Duncan we have suffered a double earthquake here in southern Java in Indonesia a couple of days ago yes I did hear about that I hope you are safe there Tias Tia so now I'm filling the bird feeders putting lots of peanuts and lots of sunflower hearts because the birds find it very difficult at this time of the year to to find any food and as you know if you are a regular viewer you will know that I love birds very much I love taking care of the nature especially during winter because during the winter months the food is very scarce I love that word scarce so if there is little of something around we can use the word scarce something is in short supply or is not easy to find it is very scarce and that's it my job is done <laughs> so now the birds can feed from the bird feeders and there I am clearing away the snow look at that I had to clear all of the snow away of course it wasn't just me doing it mr. Steve also helped me and some of my neighbors as well what a lovely lovely thoughtful group of people living nearby so everyone helped each other and there's mr. Steve can you see him in the distance cleaning the snow off the bushes and there I am look at that big pile of snow so there you can see the snow that I cleared away from the driveway at the front of my house so mr. Steve was able to get his car out of the house I hope you enjoyed that something a little different 
just to show how busy I have been this week. In fact, I've been so busy. I actually made myself ill during the week. I've had a sore throat uh, and uh, I was also losing my voice. But fortunately, today, my voice seems to have recovered. So I'm very, very pleased about that. Also, during the snow, my poor Christmas lights suffered as well. Look at my Christmas lights. So this was filmed just after the first snowfall. And you can see that the lights are completely covered. They're covered in snow. <laughs> so that was taken the first night after we had the first heavy snowfall. Look at that. There is so much snow. But now the snow has gone. You will be pleased to hear that most of the snow has now gone. Things are returning to normal. So how are you today? Are you OK? I really hope so. We have the mystery idioms coming up in a few moments. I know that many people like the mystery idioms. Also today, of course, Christmas is just eight days away. We have Santa's hotline. Can you see it here? My red telephone. This is the hotline. This is the direct line to Father Christmas right here. So if you want to send me your Christmas lists, the things you want for Christmas, please let me know during today's live stream and I will see what I can do. But of course, it all depends on whether you have been naughty Mm, or nice. So do you have a special Christmas wish? Is there something on your Christmas list? Maybe you can tell me and then I can get in touch with Santa Claus because I have the the hotline. This is Santa Claus hotline. It goes direct to the North Pole, honestly. So some questions coming later. Another question I'm going to ask today. Here's a strange one. Of course, we all love using the Internet all around the world, including China. Now, here is an interesting question. What common action has been banned on the Chinese Internet? There is something that you can't do anymore during a live stream. So if you are live streaming, if you are doing a live show in China, what common action has been banned on the Chinese Internet? It's something you can't do anymore on camera. And later on, Mr. Steve is going to show us what it is. Mr. Steve is going to do it. The thing that is now banned in China, Mr. Steve is going to do it. Oh, oh, are you excited? I really, really hope so. For those wondering, Mr. Steve will be here after three o'clock. Did it get colder in here or is it just me? I think it's you, Mr. Steve. So there he is, Mr. Steve coming at three o'clock. Now we're going to have some excerpts from one of my full English lessons and this is taken from full English number 18. Well, hello there. My name is Mr. Duncan. What's yours? Welcome to another full English episode coming to you from England, the birthplace of Samuel Johnson, William Shakespeare, Tiddlywinks, Mr. Bean, Benny Hill, the Wellington Boot, Teletubbies, and oh. Mr. Duncan. Oh, and also the English language. Talking of which, let's get going with today's full English lesson starting from now. 
It would appear that more and more people are unable to concentrate. Are unable to concentrate for long periods of time due to. Due to them having short attention. Short attention spans. It's time to take a look at another buzzword. A buzzword is a sentence or word that is in common use during a certain time or is seen as being popular. Today's buzzword is attention span. This phrase relates to the amount of time a person can concentrate on one thing. This can relate to a task or an activity. A person's attention span is measured by how long they can concentrate on doing one thing. We often talk about the short attention span of young people, the various attractions and distractions that exist nowadays has led to a belief that people are beginning to develop short attention spans. The advent of instant digital media and online streaming allows people to view many things within a short space of time. It would appear that these days people grow bored easily as more choices means that they can swap and change what they are watching in a more convenient way. The term short attention span highlights the inability to concentrate on just one thing. It would appear that more and more people are unable to concentrate for long periods of time due to having short attention spans. The word break might look simple, but in fact it can be used in many ways. As a verb, break means to destroy something by striking it or throwing the object against a hard surface. To misuse something to the point where it malfunctions or stops working is break. To take something apart in a controlled way is to break up. As a noun, break means to take a rest period from work. You can take a short break or a long break. A period of rest or inactivity is a break. To be on a break means that you are taking time away from something. In a relationship, a couple might be on a break. This means that they temporarily split. They are taking a break from each other. A brief pause or ceasing of something can be described as a break. A break in the rain. This means that the rain has stopped for a while. To break something in means to tame or teach something to be obedient. For example, you can break in a horse. Then there is the other form of break in which names the action of a person getting into your property without your permission. To gain entry by force is to break in. There is a great expression in English which is pull the plaster straight off. A plaster is a small piece of sticky material with another piece of sterile material in the middle. A sticking plaster is used for covering a cut or scratch to the skin. A minor wound that has been bleeding normally requires a plaster to be put on in order to prevent dirt from entering the wound. After a few days, the plaster must be removed. Most people hate removing the plaster as it can be a painful experience. Some people believe that the best way to remove a sticky plaster is to tear it straight off without hesitation. The pain is still there, but it is brief and the discomfort is over quickly. 
so the expression pull the plaster straight off means to get something unpleasant out the way by taking fast action don't delay or drag the problem out just pull the plaster straight off and get it out the way yes so there it was one of my full English lessons and of course you can catch my full English lessons on my YouTube channel they are available to watch just in case you have dropped by over the past few moments it's mr. Duncan that's me live on YouTube I teach English to the world and on YouTube I've been doing this for over 11 years not many people believe me when I tell them but I've been here since 2006 doing this don't forget I'm going to mention this a few times today I am here next week next Sunday is Christmas Eve I will be here mr. Steve will be here and hopefully we will be in the kitchen next Sunday doing something in preparation for Christmas Day so something very special coming next week I hope so anyway lots of people on the live chat today we have so many people Ismail AJ and also Sonia and Jeff her so what action what common action has been banned on the Chinese internet do you know do you know what it is I will tell you later on and as I mentioned mr. Steve is here after three o'clock with lots of things including words that can be made by taking away the first letter of another word so that is something coming later on with mr. Steve also we are talking about what we do when we watch television something we do when we watch TV now there is a certain program that we watch because most television these days is really really rubbish I'll be honest with you it's really terrible but there is one particular program there is one particular channel that mr. Steve and also I love to watch but what is it the answer coming after three o'clock so now the mystery idioms because lots of people love the mystery idioms they love trying to solve them so here comes today's mystery idioms and here is the first one all you have to do is say what you see so say what you see on the screen you can see something there but what is it it is a well-known phrase in English if you think you know what it is please let me know and also here is the second one I think this one is actually a bit easy to be honest I think it's a, a very easy idiom it's a well-known expression it's something many people use so what is it and of course the first one another well-known expression but what is it so there they are today's mystery idioms so what do you want for Christmas what do you want Santa Claus to buy for you to bring to your house and drop down the chimney something nice if you have a wish list if you have a little list of things you want for Christmas maybe you could let me know because here we have the hotline this is the telephone direct to Santa Claus in the North Pole I'm not joking he's on the other end of this line so if you have any gifts anything you want something special that you want Santa Claus to bring you please let me know some people are now making guesses on the mystery idioms thank you very much for that thank you Giuseppe thank you very much to Sammy thank you very much to Tomek for your guesses 
wow it's very busy here today we have so many people today on the live chat could you please not give your phone numbers out on the live chat now because for certain reasons I have to be very careful that phone numbers or addresses are not given out on the live chat so please please can you not give phone numbers or personal information out on the live chat talking of the live chat we can now have a look directly at the live chat look at that there we go you can see the live chat is now up and running we have swan please mr duncan ask santa claus to give me mr duncan through my chimney i'm not sure if i will fit down your chimney to be honest swan sonia zhu is here hi everyone i am from china hello sonia and everyone watching in china i know lots of people watch via the great firewall of china <laughs> i have a lot of people watching in china talking of which what common action has been banned on the chinese internet so if you are watching in china you probably know what the answer is to this so what common action has been banned on the chinese internet it's something you can't do anymore something you can't do during live streams <laughs> but what is that action and yesterday oh dear me i told mr steve that he will have to do that particular action and even he doesn't know what it is yet so mr steve doesn't know what it is either so wh when i when i announce the answer to you mr steve will also find out and he will have to do it he will have to actually do the action that has been banned english with sultan is here oh mr duncan this is very entertaining thank you very much for that thanks a lot if it is your first time here today please let me know i would love to hear from you if it is your first time here today the oxford english dictionary this week announced its word of the year yes every year the Oxford University Press announces what they consider to be the most used or popular word of the year. Now, can I just say that I was very surprised by their choice, not least of all because I've never heard this particular word used. I've never heard it used by anyone. But apparently, <laughs> apparently the Oxford university dictionary has announced its word of the year and the word is youthquake now i'm a person who talks about english and uses english and studies english i'm always looking at the changes in the english language and i can safely say that i haven't heard anyone use this word at all during 2017 i haven't heard anyone use this word but apparently the oxford university press seem to think that youthquake should be the the word of the year but i've never heard of this word i've never heard it used by anyone at all i don't know why so do you think there is a better word that should be the word of the year so the most used word of this year there are quite a few i can think of at least two or three already such as snowflake a lot of people have used snowflake to describe a person who is easily upset or easily offended so i think there are far better words far better words than youthquake as the word of the year the english word of the year so what do you do you think do you think youthquake is a word that has been used a lot i really really don't think so i don't think so at all 
but that's just my opinion you see after three o'clock mr steve is here today we are going to do something that you can join in with if you know any words that you can take a letter from and create a new word perhaps you can let me know after three o'clock so we will be taking a look at that also which tv channel does mr steve and myself watch most of the time these days because most television is rubbish most of it is so terrible there are far too many reality tv shows on television now so to be honest with you i don't watch much tv not as much as i used to when i was a kid i used to watch television all the time but these days i don't watch it very often not very often at all the live chat is on and there it is hey mr duncan have you ever been to turkey thank you bilal for your message yes i have been to turkey in the past i've been twice to turkey and i also made one of my english lessons in turkey as well <laughs> boom boom says brexit is the most used word this year well yes maybe certainly here in the united kingdom it's been used many many times what does youthquake mean asks mersel youthquake apparently is a surge of activity or a movement that involves mainly young people so quite often in politics so when there is an issue that many people feel strongly about if there is a large movement that is opposed or wishes to protest against a certain issue and most of those people are young we can call it a youth quake but between you and me i've hardly heard this word used really I've hardly heard it used during 2017. I've never been to Italy. Giuseppe asks if I've been to Italy. No, I haven't. Mr. Duncan, why don't we have the hot drink anymore? Well, I used to make a hot drink, but I don't do that anymore because now Mr. Steve joins me every week. You see, that's why. Have you been to Vietnam, Mr. Duncan? I have never been to Vietnam ever. No, I've never been, but maybe one day I will go there. Maybe one day I will take a trip to Vietnam. Who knows what the future will hold? Who knows what will happen during 2018? Let's have a look at another one of my English lessons. This is a selection of excerpts from my full English lesson number 20. Do you like to whistle? I know I do. I often whistle a little tune to myself when I'm feeling down, as it tends to cheer me up. I'm not very good at whistling, but I still enjoy doing it. I remember when I was living in China, I would always be told off for whistling. Don't whistle, Mr. Duncan. It's rude. But I could not help myself. Sometimes when you are feeling happy, you just want to share that feeling with others by whistling a little tune to yourself. Not everyone is able to whistle. Some people can whistle very loudly. Can you whistle? I love watching movies and TV shows, especially when my favourite performers are in them. 
However, sometimes I find myself wondering whether or not they are putting as much effort into their performances as they could be. For instance, sometimes an actor in a movie might give a subdued performance in their role. I'm sure we have all seen this happen. When this occurs, we can say that the actor is phoning in their actions. They are not putting as much effort into what they are doing as they usually do. I didn't think much of Bruce Willis in The Whole Nine Yards. He seemed to be phoning it in. This means that the actor in question seemed bored and disinterested in the role he was playing. He seemed to be phoning it in. A dull performance can be described as weak, lacklustre, bland and uninspiring. They are doing it without any interest whatsoever. They are phoning it in. It's time now to take a look at another buzzword. A buzzword is a word or sentence that is popular or well used during a certain period of time. Today's buzzword is meme. In its original use, the word meme is a noun that means an element of a culture or system of behaviour passed on from one individual to another by imitation or other non-genetic means. That is to say, a habit or type of behaviour which is passed on by being copied or imitated by others. These days, the word meme relates to an image, video or piece of text which is typically humorous in nature that is copied and spread rapidly by internet users, often with slight variations. So, a meme is a funny picture, or a humorous video clip, or a catchy slogan. I'm sure recently you have looked at a meme on the internet. Perhaps it was that winning baby, or maybe that miserable cat or that sarcastic reinterpretation of Willy Wonka. Or perhaps it was that annoyed baby. Each one of these images is a good example of a meme. <laughs> English can be a confusing subject. And just to prove it, here are two confusing words. They are possibly and probably. The word possibly is an adverb that can be used to indicate doubt or hesitancy. An uncertain statement might use possibly. The man was bleeding, possibly from a stab wound. You can use possibly in a polite question. Could you possibly open the window? To emphasise in a sentence that something is surprising or bewildering. What can you possibly mean? To emphasise that someone has or will put all their effort into something. Run as fast as you possibly can. The word probably is also an adverb that is used to state that something is certainly going to happen. To be sure of the outcome means that you can say that it will probably happen. From your point of view, or as far as you can tell, the outcome is likely to occur that way. I think she'll probably pass the exam. The guests probably won't arrive until later.
Doop 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 doop. Thank you very much for your wishes today. By the way, lots of get well soon wishes. Uh, I have been a little bit unwell during the week. I've had a sore throat and I've been coughing and spluttering. Uh, and I started to lose my voice on Wednesday, so I did get very worried. I thought perhaps maybe I would have to cancel today. But fortunately, my voice has returned and everything is OK. Mr. Steve will be here in around about four minutes from now. <gasps> oh, my goodness. And today we'll be talking about our Christmas wish lists. Is there something that you want for Christmas? And of course, we have the live chat. If you want to say hello to Mr. Steve, the live chat is very busy today. Lots of people saying hello. <laughs> As you saw in the full English lesson just a few moments ago, yes, I was talking about whistling. Apparently, there is a saying in my village, according to Jeff, Jeff says if you whistle at night, the ghosts will come around. Yes, people used to say that to me in China because I would often whistle and people would say, Mr. Duncan, you shouldn't whistle. It's very bad. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Duncan. Nice to attend your live screen, your live stream today. Thank you very much for your your guesses on the mystery idioms for those who missed the idioms here they are again today's mystery idioms just say what you see and here is the second one i think this one is very easy this one is a very popular phrase often used in english but what is it do you know what it is if you think you do please let me know on the live chat and of course we are just eight days away from Christmas yes eight days next week I will be here live on Christmas Eve but the question today is what do you want for Christmas what is your letter to Santa Claus we have the direct line to Santa Claus at the North Pole I have my red telephone and after the show has finished, I will phone Santa Claus and give him your wish lists. <laughs> Mr. Duncan. I would like to be a member of your group. Please add me to the one where I can practice. Uh, um, well, of course, you can join me live every Sunday. I'm here every single Sunday from 2 p.m. UK time. So my my little group is right here and it's live every single Sunday. So don't worry about it. I'm here live. So that is where my group is. Also, you can follow me on Facebook as well. Just put Duncan or Duncan James and you will find me on Facebook. So the mystery idioms also lots of questions to ask you besides the mystery idioms also what common action has been banned on the internet in china there is now something you are not allowed to do during your live streams but today we will be doing it live in fact it won't be me <laughs> i've been very clever here I'm actually going to get Mr. Steve to do it. It's something that you are not allowed to do anymore on the Chinese Internet. But I will be getting Mr. Steve to do it later on. What is it? You'll have to just stay tuned to find out. So it is an action. It is something that you do that is now being banned. Where is Mr. Steve? asks resolver well guess what mr steve is here and it is three o'clock and mr steve is definitely on his way
dippy 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 dip dip so now we go live to the other corner of the studio where at the moment mr steve is sitting he is looking very relaxed and i have created a lovely little christmas grotto for mr steve and here he is he seems to have so many fans these days it's mr steve hello <laughs> well oh mr duncan after how many months have i been appearing on your show now is it three months four it's, months it's, five it's, months it's nearly five months now and what have i been doing that entire time and many of your listeners have said that you should get from mr steve somewhere to sit and finally oh this is bliss i don't have to stand up for the whole hour well first of all steve <laughs> don't get too used to it because you've only got the chair this week and also next week oh the chair must stay you <laughs> tell him you tell him i've got to keep this chair oh it's lovely is it comfortable it's very comfortable it's very hot does very it hot in your studio today mr Duncan. does the chair vibrate uh, well unfortunately not but I'm, I'm hoping for an upgrade i'm glad it, i'm glad it doesn't vibrate because i don't want you getting too excited you see well perhaps you can get me one as a christmas present <laughs> a vibrating massaging chair oh and look next to you because big, uh, c do you remember last week we had a big problem last week with uh, the penguin and the polar bear because who was it was it <laughs> you that said that the polar bears and penguins live together but they don't they live at opposite ends of the planet i don't think it was me if it was i was just i was sort of testing the audience to see if they could spot that deliberate oh, mistake i yes. see so, so it wasn't a mistake you were just oh, testing the audience testing the audience to see if anyone spotted and some clever person did what do you think do you think mr steve is is kidding do you think he's lying do you think he was just <laughs> testing you i think mr steve really did think that penguins and polar bears live together but they don't it's a kind of a sort of a joke i knew that of course i did can i just say that that it looks so christmassy where you are sitting at the i moment. can't see it it's very lovely i'm looking forward and all i can see is just mess you want to see his studio beyond these cameras it's just a mess apparently your face has just been described as careful angelic angelic well it's funny you should say that somebody last night said to me i look like a priest <laughs> <laughs> i was out last night a priest or maybe a vicar angelic maybe i should have a, a halo over my head can i just halo. say that, that if there is one thing that mr steve definitely isn't definitely is not it's angelic trust me I'm more saintly than you, Mr. Duncan. So tell me about your day yesterday, because the, the weather last week was very bad. We had lots of snow. And of course, it would appear that for many people, the, the, the bad weather caused a lot of problems, including mm. for you as well. Bad weather. Have we spoken about bad weather? We did last all? week. But but yesterday, yesterday, you were very disappointed. Well, in fact, on Friday, you received a phone call, didn't you? Well, I... I, I don't know whether I've mentioned this before. I think I have. I, I, I am in a choir. So we like to put on Christmas concerts. And we had two Christmas concerts last week. Uh, one on Monday, which was cancelled, understandably, because we'd had over a foot of snow. Uh, but then we had one that was supposed to be last night. And I got a phone call on Friday to say that one was cancelled as well. Even though the snow had cleared up. Turns out that the car park uh, to the church was uh, slippery, icy, lots of black ice. And they decided to cancel the concert. So I was very disappointed. You were. I was. I like Christmas concerts and I'd learnt things and we'd all work very hard to prepare for it. So guess what I did? <laughs> <laughs> I, well as i understand it now this is something that i couldn't believe that you actually did but you actually phoned up someone else that was holding <laughs> that was holding a concert i in, did in another place and, and and you hadn't even rehearsed for it a so different you, choir so you had no idea what they were going to do well 
I they'd asked me if I wanted to sing in this choir with them as well because I'm members of different things as you as you are you are and very you are a very busy man prolific <laughs> prolific is the word <laughs> and um, I would turned it down because we'd got this other, I got this other concert you can't be at two places at once so I knew this was on so I just phoned up and said um, any chance of me coming along just to uh, sing in the choir and uh, he said yes and he but told me what the what the program of the music was I got about half of it um, but around, I thought it was because I was so disappointed. I just wanted to sing some Christmas songs. I know. And uh, <laughs> in the choir, and I couldn't. So I was very disappointed. Uh, probably about three hours before, I started to realise just the probably the error of my ways in in going to stand. I'm amazed they even let me do it. Uh, stand in a concert where I'd never even sung half the music and hadn't even gone to one single rehearsal it was a little scary yeah so do you think in hindsight in be hindsight because, because i always say that hindsight is a luxury because we always think oh if only if only i knew that if only i knew this if only i hadn't done that or or i hadn't be gone yes. there so do you think now do you think that it was a good idea to go to a concert to perform and you hadn't attended any rehearsals whatsoever? I hadn't even got two pieces of the music. I had to lean over and look at one of the other <laughs> one of the other choir members to look at his music. Uh, it was it was interesting. I didn't sing in the any. I probably sung about half of it, I would say, and then mimed the rest. Oh, I see. But so was, so you uh, pretended to sing. You were going. <laughs> yes it was it was interesting probably in retrospect uh looking back in retrospect or in hindsight probably wasn't a good idea but uh, at the same time it was quite good experience in having to sight read bits of music literally i'd had five minutes to see beforehand okay one so, or two people are asking mr steve why did they con cancel the concert well they can although all the snow had gone the car we'd had lots of frost the temperature had gone below zero every night so the uh people at the church had decided that it was too dangerous because of the frost on the car park and all these el quite elderly people coming along to see, see the concert because let's face it here in the uk most people that go to church now are quite elderly mm. so they come so th 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 there's always the risk that they could slip over in the slippery ice and break a break a hip or that's quite common to fall over yes. and break a hip so they didn't want to uh they wanted to avoid any accidents before christmas which yeah. i can understand but at the same time it wasn't really that unsafe and they could have put some salt down was my uh, was what i said to them why don't you put some salt down and they said we've got no one to do it <laughs> yeah you, you, do you know what i think it is steve now this is my opinion this is from from my angle i think maybe the the people that run the church the owners of the church were worried that someone would have an accident and then maybe that person would sue them possibly because we do live in a very strange society nowadays where everyone wants to sue each other so every time someone has an accident or they fall over or they slip or they 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 bang their head on something or maybe one of their children has an accident maybe in a supermarket the first thing they do is can i sue them the first thing they ask to themselves can i sue them can i get some money for this so we we do live in a very mm. strange world so so nowadays people tend to be i think the word is over cautious yes i think i agree with you i think that's exactly what happened uh, there's always the risk that somebody might slip over and say, well, you didn't put salt on this car park. Therefore, uh, we are going to get compensation. And of uh, course, many people, which, as you <laughs> said just now, if you go to church on Sunday, you will find that many of the people there are very mature, elderly, elderly. <laughs> they are mature people. They are elderly. So, yes. So I think you've got these two things going on there uh, even though the snow had disappeared they were probably worried about someone still yes. slipping over maybe 
on a little bit of ice or maybe a little bit of snow that was still left so I think so yes, uh, yeah, yes apparently all of this started in the US uh, one or two people on the live chat are saying yes it started in the USA I think so for many years people have been suing each other they've been getting money from yes. someone else maybe yeah. due to an accident or some sort of neglect but now that that habit has has crept into the way we behave here in the UK as well so yes a lot of people do many people asking can mr. Steve sing today now I, I think maybe next week we will have some songs uh, we might sing some traditional songs the problem is we have to be very careful because if you yes. sing something you have to make sure that it isn't in in copyright mm. so we have to make sure that YouTube doesn't punish us for, for infringing on people's copyright so that's the reason why we have to be very careful we do we have to sing things uh, that are out of copyright which usually means they've got to be over a hundred years old um, and uh, but yes it's strange because YouTube know they've they've got these clever computers that are analyzing everything that goes on and if if, if if you sing a song that somebody's just uh, uh, written recently then uh, and sing it they they will uh, they could cut your what will they do mr duncan will well, they, they, they cut will, the video well they will block the video or block take the video. the video down or or even punish you personally on your channel maybe they will give you some punishment that will stop you from using certain features on youtube so you have to be very careful copyright on mm. youtube is a very sensitive issues so we have to be careful before we sing anything or do anything we have to make sure that it, it has been cleared for copyright um, now I was mentioning earlier mr. Steve that um, we, we do occasionally sit down together to watch television don't we sometimes we do yes but we don't do it as often as we used to because well between you and me there there is very little to watch nowadays on television most TV from my point of view a personal opinion is pretty rubbish but there is one TV channel that we've discovered and <laughs> I, I've been asking people to actually guess no one has got this right and I don't think they ever will it's but you wouldn't expect it <laughs> you definitely wouldn't expect it definitely not so the channel in question is actually a home shopping channel it's one of these channels where things are sold uh, normally a person will describe something they will sell something to the camera uh, so lots of people watch and then they can buy things from the the internet site that is connected to the channel uh, and it's one person in particular here he is I'm going to show people this <laughs> this man this this might be at the moment this guy is the funniest man on television he is so funny his name is Peter Simon and he presents on a, a shopping channel called ideal world ideal world and he is the funniest man on television and, and we have started watching him haven't we we have it's uh, <laughs> it's the it is literally the most entertaining program on television <laughs> we're not we're not interested in buying anything it's just the way that he sells things uh, it's live I think that's what makes it so funny because things go wrong occasionally yes he gets his words mixed up sometimes but he's just so entertaining and we we know all about live because we do it ourselves we are now live on YouTube so sometimes when things are live things can go wrong there, there can be problems maybe technical problems or maybe the person says something they shouldn't and this particular guy is probably I would say maybe the most entertaining person on television without but, question but the sad thing is that this is just a home shopping channel so it isn't it isn't a, a, a TV channel one of the big TV channels it isn't one of the big TV networks it's actually a very small network it's it's a home shopping channel but the guy on it is so entertaining 
no it isn't qvc it is called ideal world i'm not i'm not being sponsored by them no but it is the funniest thing on television but so we we when uh, he's on when he's night, on yes normally it's very boring but when this particular guy is presenting it is very funny and we sit there laughing we laugh like drains he's he's tried to sell things before like like sort of quite expensive uh porcelain uh delicate oh, objects no. and he dropped them and broken them remember, live do you, mr steve steve do you remember the elvis <laughs> the elvis yes. presley cup there was this big cup and it, it was shaped like elvis presley's head and he 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 was showing it to the camera and then the camera went to something else but all you heard was this almighty loud smash this smashing noise and then the camera came back and this poor mug in the shape of elvis presley was now lying on the floor in pieces he does all sorts of funny things because it's live that's the thing there's not there isn't very much live television apart from the news and let's face it that's pretty boring you're not going to get news readers saying anything particularly entertaining you get the odd the odd one who's a bit of a maverick but uh he is yes anyway i think we've said enough about that but he is very funny so it's it's a sad reflection on the standards of television mm. today that uh, a live shopping channel is the most entertaining thing uh, to watch <laughs> it, it, it's <laughs> sad moment. it's sad that nowadays because because tv channels are everywhere we have about a hundred tv channels just on our basic yes. television set so even mm. if you just turn the tv on you have about a hundred tv channels and most of it is really really terrible it's rubbish but when you when you think in the past there were there were only three channels and they were only on for maybe eight hours or ten hours a day so now that uh, tv is 24 7 and there's lots more channels then everything's become diluted mm. So you can't just make quality programs anymore. You've got to fill all those hours with something. Yes. Uh, and so you end up filling it with mostly rubbish. That's it. And, I think uh, so. You know, it's it's quite sad. But anyway, we've got plenty to do. We don't need to watch television because we are here teaching English. Well, you are. I'm helping you to uh, millions, literally millions of people. How many have we got watching today? A couple of million? We've got a lot of people watching today. A lot of people yeah. are interested to tune in. They, they have tuned in to see what is <laughs> going on. So it's let's teach them. Oh, yes. I'd rather I'd rather you didn't do that banging, by the way. Oh, you know me. Yes, I do. <laughs> I do know you very well, unfortunately. We all have our crosses to bear. Crosses That's what to bear. That's it. <laughs> including you maybe it's a very religious reference so christmas next week we're, we're hoping to do something special christmas eve we will both be here next week uh hopefully wearing our santa hats and we will look very christmassy next week not this week we don't want to do it too soon because then Save it will it, ru it will ruin the the, the the fun but hopefully next week we will be in the kitchen doing something special next week yes something that everyone during christmas does something that everyone does at this time of year find <laughs> out what it is next week i hope we will be doing it talk of doing things we are talking yes. about doing things what common action has been banned on the chinese internet this week do you know steve i have no idea you mentioned this to me earlier so you did <laughs> warn me this is something um, that you're going to demonstrate later <laughs> i'm not sure i really genuinely honestly i don't know i thought it would be something like you know sticking your mid middle finger up or or maybe um i don't know picking your nose i, I don't know what it is can't imagine what it would be that it is a very innocent Chinese it's line. a very innocent thing it's, it's a very, very innocent, innocent thing. very innocent but you want me to so am i am i going to get banned on uh, on chinese internet live internet if i do this well i'm not i'm not sure about that 
The French Leo says you are, you have almost 6,000 subscribers. No, I, I have nearly half a million. Half a million. I Not 6,000. <laughs> I have nearly 600,000. That's over half a million. So at the moment, I have over half a million subscribers. Mr. Duncan is massive, huge I'm around the world in the world of English. I'm very big in the <laughs> English area very big indeed Go into that so today we are we've talked about that anything else you want to mention mr steve is there something that you are hoping that you will get for christmas because uh, we are of course talking about christmas it is just over one week away well of course i'm hoping for lots of presents but uh, probably won't get those but i've had already quite a few christmas cards oh yes and i've got a little selection here let's have a look oh yes nice pretty christmas card and of course right so maybe well i probably get about 20 or 30 a year christmas cards of friends family mm -hmm. that sort of thing so which means that i've got to uh write my own cards out and i it's one of the tasks that i hate doing it's so boring having to write cards out i just don't like doing it because it always ends up being a rush so you can't enjoy it so anyway do you want to see some of the cards that i've had yeah here we go here's a here's a religious one. Oh yes that's that that seems to be depicting the i want to say is it the three kings yes what does it say here it probably says inside it's uh it's a charity card oh okay so people now tend to send charity cards which means when you buy the card a small fraction of the money that you've spent on it goes towards a charity so what 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 is the charity uh this is a children's charity called bernardo's ah very famous but that's, that's been around for one. i think bernardo's bernardo's charity has been around for, for i think it's over a hundred years and this 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 particular card which is a very popular scene to put on christmas cards that's yes. showing the three kings uh following the the star to Bethlehem where they're hoping to find baby Jesus so if you believe that sort of stuff uh, this was a, a famous sort of fable I would say a fable uh, uh, or a story <laughs> around uh, I, I believe it's in the Bible <laughs> well we won't uh, we won't uh, question that so that's that's the first card that's a very popular thing once, ag to put once on Christmas again cards. once again mr. Steve is is digging a hole it's the penguin and the polar bear all over again <laughs> a fable story a fable often is is untrue <laughs> so deal with that one mr steve you you can you can deal with all the complaints who was that from let's see who that was from who was that card from let's change the subject quickly because normally yes okay that was from somebody called viv that's a friend of mine okay so what do we have here there's another i'm not quite sure what this one is it's a uh, it looks religious but the sheep on there as well that looks like something from from maybe norman times they, they appear to be wearing clothing from i think it looks like sort of i want to say 15th century it's 14th called, century it's called annunciation of the shepherds oh okay yes it looks like it looks like it's more sort of yeah, i want to say medi it looks very medieval it is a few angels on there as well yeah here's a but the, the interesting thing about christmas cards is people send all sorts of different things okay so there we go that that was sort of religious scenes how about this one from somebody who lives in wolverhampton oh look at that <laughs> from the city of wolverhampton city of wolverhampton from the city of wolverhampton <gasps> that's amazing and, and of course wolverhampton is where we used to live yes and of course we've got lots of friends there and this one produced exclusively <gasps> for wolverhampton tourist information center oh my goodness well you can't get better than that so you know if ever there was a place to visit as a tourist it's wolverhampton who's it from it's from jill oh yes your your friend, friend. Right? yes your friend jill wouldn't recommend stopping off in wolverhampton if you're touring the uk wolverhampton Probably is a uh, wolverhampton is a great place to go to if you want to get attacked mugged or stabbed it's a good place to go if you're uh, a refugee <laughs> that's where you'll end up 
Anyway, let's say no more of that. It's a great place. Why, why, do, you keep, why do you keep years. saying let's? These, these are your comments, by the way, not uh, mine. Don't say let's. No, Wolverhampton is actually it gets a very bad reputation okay. in the UK. Okay, I think I think we've slagged Wolverhampton but, off. No, there's a lot of good things going on in Wolverhampton. That's where I was singing last night. There's all sorts of cultural things going on. Perhaps we'll be the Wolverhampton will become the new uh, city of culture uh, in a few years' time. <laughs> uh, you never know. Tom Eck just said there is no proof to confirm that the scene on the card is historical exactly oh okay exactly. so i think tomek might be agreeing with you but it, it's 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 nice it's you know anyway let's look right here's another one here's another one how uh, which is people know i like cars and so they send me uh themed christmas cards there's santa claus in a car oh okay i like oh, that. I, that, that that i love the car what 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 car is that sir uh, that, steve that's an actually it's an mg which is a which are a famous sort of sports car british sports car from the 1950s 60s let's have another look there we go that so. is great i love that so much and i like the fact that santa is driving the car and, and there, there seems to be there seem to be lots of stars blowing behind him as he's driving along. I love that so much. And, the, of course, the car is red. car is red. So instead of reindeers pulling him along, he's got a, a, a nice bright red MG car. I love that. Uh, I love that so much. That's brilliant. Wow. So you, I, I get the feeling that you've had lots of Christmas cards this year. Lots of Christmas cards. I've got there's a really funny one here that made me laugh. OK, then. Have I seen this yet? You haven't. OK, then. Let's, I haven't Should seen I this card yet. But, but Steve said that apparently this is very funny. Well, this one. How, this is. I won't say who this is from. But this is a very boring card. <laughs> Mary and Bright. Well, I don't know. I, that's quite a nice card. It's, it's fun. You see, if you look on the back and see where it's from. OK. The, the, uh, it just says made in China. Oh, I see. <laughs> so they're probably all made in China, but... We, people tend to look at the quality of the Christmas cards that people send to them. So that gives you some idea of what this person thinks of me. Uh, not a lot to send me a cheap card like that. I'm not sending them one back. Right. So who is that from? I'm not going to say. Oh. <laughs> I thought we we're going to have a bit of a, a bit of a bit of a scandal here, or a bit a bit of uh, controversy. There's a nice one. Look, uh, children yeah. playing in the snow. Oh, isn't that lovely? Oh, look, there's some children playing on the ice. By the way, kids, if if there are any children watching, please do not skate unattended on the ice, like like those children are doing in that uh, on that card. Don't do it, please. That is a safety warning from Mr. Duncan, <laughs> on behalf of of. <laughs> planet earth we could have a before and after on this one couldn't we you could all have happy. you could have yes you could have on the back you could have then, them all the kids they, they've they've fallen through the ice all fallen through the ice and they've all got broken arms and just 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 the hats floating on the water right here's uh, how about this one i opened this card and it instantly made me laugh okay <laughs> <laughs> now is that supposed to be us yes I think I think I am the one on the right. <laughs> I think the one on the left is definitely you. This is from my sister. Oh, your sister sent this. She did. Oh. Uh, so yes, I think that's very funny. I do like that. Is is there glitter on it? There is because oh. I've got glitter all over me. I this know. is the this is another problem oh. about Christmas cards. Is you open them, you you end up with glitter. <sighs> And, and it's it gets on your face and oh, people it's say why have you got glitter on your face you can't get rid of it for weeks little tiny pieces of, little of tiny silver pieces of glitter. And, and gold and, and look they, they get everywhere it's all over my trousers it's everywhere and of course for months and months and months after christmas you will find little pieces of glitter yes. everywhere sticking to your face on your clothes everywhere but still the card is very nice the card is very funny does that it? so far is my number one card um so well, that will take pride of place uh in the living room abril ha uh, is going to ask santa claus if they can visit england and learn english perfectly well of course england would be a very good place to go to because it is the birthplace <gasps> 
the birthplace of the English language. Do you have another card? I I have got I've got lots here. Yeah. I'm very popular, you know. You are very popular. Here's one. Here's a small card. And uh it's uh There we go. Dogs <laughs> looking festive. I like that. That that I I think these dogs they look like I want to say they're labradors, but I don't think they are. I think actually they are they are dash hounds. There we go. There's absolutely nothing on the back of this card. Okay. Which uh, denotes its cheapness. I said. So, so if you receive, <laughs> this is something. If you receive a Christmas card that has nothing on the back, nothing whatsoever. So no manufacturer, no place of origin. You, you are normally pretty sure that that is a very cheap card. Mm, yes. Okay. A very cheap card, nothing on the back. What you want to see is charities, yeah, uh, or exclusive gallery, yes. gallery, something hand, like that. You want to see handmade, handmade, something made by hand, and then you know that it's a very expensive card, and that person thinks a lot of you. I think so. Another card? Oh, more cards? Yes, come on, S let's have. Card. Everyone's enjoying that's this. Another. Uh, that's another sort of. Uh, popular sort of scene Christmassy scene people okay. all uh, playing out in the ice and snow again that's similar to the last one that's it there there appear to be adults in that adults, one adults yes so so there are no children playing on the ice and risking their lives that's good this one on the back has got tom smith oh i see is that tom, the is that the name of the manufacturer or the artist i'm not sure if that's up market or not up market what does that mean up market up market expensive exclusive oh i see so if if you describe something as being up market it means that it's very sophisticated very expensive yes. it's been produced in a place that makes things that are maybe very pricey yes like up market you could have an up market anything an up market handbag Ooh. for women you could have an up market car would be something like a mercedes oh yeah an up market well, i can't i'm not really into all these brands but think of some up market brands mr duncan for, uh, as, uh, well especially for women for i women. think i think yes. women uh maybe handbags because women like buying handbags so normally one handbag isn't enough they have to have lots of handbags you've got pr uh like jimmy Choo and prada pra oh yes and the, with the food shopping as well if you buy your food from uh in in over in this country from a supermarket called I don't even know if they like to refer to themselves as a supermarket, but it's Waitrose. Waitrose. That would be upmarket. Oh, I see. Uh, food shopping. Whereas if you went to Asda, or that would be downmarket. Oh, <laughs> food shopping. <laughs> I must say to I must say, Mr. Steve, you seem to be upsetting everyone today. You've upset really? religious people. You've upset people living in Wolverhampton. You've you've upset people I who send upset anyone. You've upset people who send cheap Christmas cards, and now you've upset people who shop at ASDA. Here's one here. You see, uh, when it's on the back, it says some, what it says on the back says something about the person. I think it. So if they send you a particular charity, it's because they believe in that. We often get cards, don't we? Sometimes, or we send cards, or you do from the rspb yes the uh royal society for the protection of birds because you like birds so we if you get a card from somebody that's from a children's charity maybe they've been touched by a tragedy uh and here's one here from from somebody that's it's quite a nice card it's interesting it's uh it's trying to make fun of uh the, the london underground oh yes it looks the it, names. It, it looks like the map of the london underground but they've changed the names of the the stations to uh, uh sort of christmas themes uh but on the back uh the charity is mind oh yes of course the mind of course is is to do with mental health mental health so maybe this person has had a problem and has sought uh, this charity for help or knows friends or family that have I won't say who it is oh surprising uh, right 
<laughs> it's not from me, is it? <laughs> not from you, no. no. I, you don't have to disguise the, your mental problems by sending me a card from a charity. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Steve. I'm feeling all lively now. <laughs> Stop banging the chair. <laughs> If I want to bang this chair, I'll bang it. OK, then, just calm down. <laughs> this is what Steve oh. is like. Whenever, whenever Steve has been performing or singing, he always gets very, very excited about everything. Everything becomes such a joy to him. But sometimes it can be very annoying. <laughs> Another car, one more car. One more, I've just thrown them all away. No, oh, that's it. That's you. all the cars there are. That's it? Yeah. Oh, so actually you haven't had that many. <laughs> Now, they've been very slow to come in this year. Normally, normally, I think people are just getting sick to death. Everyone's so busy. Apparently, Card writing is uh, quite. Yeah, I know. I think so. But apparently, uh, Julie G, talking of sending things through the post. Nobody sends me cards. Only SMS messages. Yes, a lot of people send cards now through the internet they send a virtual card through the internet so yes i think so i think that's very yeah. true a lot of people Quite now popular. maybe it's a little bit of laziness i think so yes maybe they are a little lazy do english people send cards to the queen i think i think there are some people who do write to the queen all the time but but maybe they uh they they don't get out much uh but yes uh, i don't know anyone that i've that. never i've never had a christmas card from the queen ever maybe on my hundredth birthday oh maybe. yes you'll get you'll get one from the queen you get a card from 100. the queen when you reach a hundred yes. years old that is very that is true when you get a hundred years old in the uk the queen will send you a card it's true yes and when the queen is a hundred everyone in the uk has to send a card to her in return you see so i might send a card to a queen but not to the queen <laughs> that's another story that's altogether another story altogether. <laughs> another story altogether we've talked about a lot of things today we've got the mystery idioms let's have a quick look idioms. the mystery idioms so there they are all you have to do is tell me what on earth these mystery idioms are just say what you see we've had quite a few answers today quite a few correct answers well done to those who have got involved what would you like for christmas though is there something you would like uh wh when people are asked normally what they want for christmas quite often they will be very selfless and they will say things like i want world peace for Christmas I want everyone to live in peace and harmony at Christmas but really they want an Xbox that's what they really want not world peace how about your two front teeth <laughs> isn't that a song I think that is a song uh, it's a Chris yes it's a I don't know how it goes but uh, what do you want for Christmas your two front teeth Something no it's like uh, we're well, there it's it's <laughs> All I want for Christmas is my two front teeth. My two front teeth. My two front teeth. All I want for Christmas is my two front teeth. Santa, please send them to me. Oh, that's very nice, Mr. Duncan. I just hope now that that isn't in copyright. Yeah. <laughs> we may be cut off at any that's it minute. youtube will come round and they will knock on the door and they'll say here here mr duncan you've been singing songs again you've been singing songs that are, that are in copyright you stupid man and then they will push a big custard pie into my face and you'll eat it because you like custard pie i will lick it from my own face <laughs> which is very hard to do by the way he's got very a tongue like a lizard <laughs> <laughs> now what else are we ups doing today now you're upsetting me so we're looking at words today mr steve we're looking at words that you can change by removing a letter from the front or the back so the first letter or the last letter if you remove one letter 
it creates a new word here is an example very quickly we have the word bridge bridge if you take the letter b away you end up with ridge ridge a ridge is a piece of land that goes out and then drops very steeply a ridge so you might have a mountain ridge so there we go so there is an example a good example of changing a word into another word by removing one letter do you have one steve yes i have uh, some examples of removing the last letter oh i like that from uh, for now you'll notice that i've improved something this week mr duncan okay is it is it your handwriting yes it is my handwriting because <laughs> last week we had a lot of people <laughs> a lot of people complaining last week <laughs> that that th th they said mr duncan we can't read steve's handwriting it's too messy so i i had to tell steve today to improve his handwriting so let's have a look let's Rattling see over the knuckles so here's the first one let's Rem see if mr steve's handwriting has improved <laughs> right so here's a four letter word oh okay it's a it's a it's not a rude one good because when we say four letter word here we mean in the uk we tend to mean a rude word yes but these are not so can you see that it's a right dime which is uh, an american coin and if you take the e off you get dim i see so dime which is uh, uh, american <laughs> change small change small change is a dime take you take the e off you take the e away and you got dim which means well there's two meanings for that at least either the light levels have, have gone down so it gets dim low light low light or somebody who's not very clever uh, a person who might be a bit stupid we can describe as dim not bright dim so dim uh, yeah so, so a dim person is not very clever dime or becomes dim or if a light is dim it means it is not very bright which basically is the same meaning for a person who's not very clever. They are not very bright. <laughs> of course, you could. Uh, um, we're just taking letters off today. We're not adding them on, are we? No, just taking them off. Taking them off. Right. So that's that one. I could just chuck them on the floor here. It's much more relaxed just sitting here. Are you enjoying the chair? Yes. It's very nice. I can I can swivel. Look. I can swivel. I won't go all the way round. I might knock something over. <laughs> well, could I? Can I go all the way round? No, 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 please. Ooh. Don't don't go all the way round. <laughs> oh, you, he's getting you... anxious. Sorry, Steve. Do you know you did exactly the same thing last year? <laughs> you 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 actually did the same thing last year. You 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 got in that chair and you said, "Does it turn all the way round?" And I said, "No, don't don't try and do it because you will destroy the set behind you so please don't do that please don't turn around in the chair please Mr. Duncan gets very upset about adjusting any of his equipment or i'm just or anything in the studio i'm just worried about this the, the studio falling down that's all right here's another one. Oh, here's another one here is another this is a word you you can remove remove from the end again oh bump <laughs> Can you see that? <laughs> oh, I see what you've done there. Bump becomes bum. So bump means to knock into something. You bump. Bump is, or you might have a bump on your skin. Hmm. Uh, a, a sort of uneven area on your skin, a bump. A raised area. Raised area. Is a bump. Uh, but you take the P off, it becomes bum. Bum. Which is your backside. It's, it's your bum. It's your buttocks your buttocks your buttocks is your bum so are we getting any anybody else coming up uh, oh and examples? don't forget also a homeless person who sleeps on the street yes a bum in, in the united states can be described as a bum b u m bum anybody got any examples out there that they can tell us that they we, might we have hello hello Ooh. 
hello becomes hell oh i've got hello becomes hell that's very good okay have you got it there no oh. <laughs> Why did, you get, why did you get so excited well because i've got one that's sort of related to to that Take it with me because if you uh, you know when if you cease to exist you may go to heaven or hell but uh <laughs> if you diet and ah. take the tea off then you die so diet take the tea away and it you becomes. die and of course if you uh do diet too much and uh, become anorexic you could in fact die so in fact <laughs> that's a bit of an unfortunate uh it would be interesting example. to see it would be interesting steve to see the uh, the etymology of that uh, where, where it comes from what diet diet yes because yeah. it has because it has the word die in it so it could be the shall, yeah, shall i just have a quick look here because let me just quickly let's yes. quickly look up diet and see if it comes from something to do with related to food <laughs> meanwhile <laughs> i'll put up another one shall i okay while you're looking that up googling are you googling it mr duncan no here we go so we're, my examples are all you asked me to uh, prepare ones where we're just taking letters off the end so here's another one zoom oh which means to go very fast zoom around becomes zoo which is uh, a place where animals are kept they are kept in captivity kept in captivity so i don't like zoos zooming around all over the place which is what you do before this show preparing for this show mr duncan is zooming around all over the place you're not kidding and of course today i, I got up late i, I got up at 10 o'clock instead of nine and, and i was in a right Apparently. a right rush and i did explain earlier that i wasn't very well during the week because i was running around outside in the freezing cold weather doing things mm. for for my live stream and i got i got a sore throat i didn't feel very well oh diet here we go diet apparently comes from the middle english from the old french diete or dieteur uh, which is the verb form and it comes originally from the greek di dieta dieta or dieta which is a way of life a way of life so it doesn't have anything to do with dying or being dead it actually is the greek word for a way of life the way your life is lived or the type of life you have your diet that's interesting so there we go we, even we have learned something today thank you for that mr duncan i've got another word here here we go there is one so we have proof 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 p r o o and we take the p away and we uh, end up with roof. roof so proof becomes roof you see i haven't been as good as you steve i haven't written the the alternative so all i'm doing is making it go slightly off the screen well i <laughs> <laughs> i like to prepare unlike last night i think yours is better than mine to be honest so proof becomes proof of course is evidence the way of proving the way of making something that happened seem as if it actually did happen you have something to show that an occurrence took place or something did happen you have proof and of course roof is the thing on the top of your house that stops the rain from coming in very true do you have one now i have one uh taking the letter off the end bark becomes bar so bark is something that uh, is on the outside of a tree trunk bark or the bark. sound of a dog or yes or the uh, the sound of a barking dog becomes bar somewhere where you drink or a bar of maybe it could be an iron bar so a, pe uh, a piece of metal used as a a barrier or a weapon 
uh, a bar you've got lots of metal bars in here have I you have uh, attached to your many tripods oh of course I'll tell you something if <laughs> Steve likes my tripods very much you would not believe how many tripods mr. Duncan has tripods uh, do you no, we can't show one can we I think people know what a tripod is it's got three legs hence the try which means three and then you put the camera on top of it or lights pod means foot pod means there's, there's a three three footed and thing that you put a tripod <laughs> yeah just i just you know what you know what steve there there are moments when you really should stop and that was one of them oh well, we can cut that out later the live chat <laughs> The live chat is on at the moment. Oh, it's not letting He's me do it. He's got about 20, just to finish that story. Oh, yeah. One, one day we'll pan around this studio. He's got more tripods than any man I've ever met. Oh, I see. You must have about 18 or 20 tripods. It's, I tell you, it's a trip hazard I was hoping. Studio. I was hoping to connect to the, the live chat again, but it's disconnected me for some reason. I don't know why. But the live chat is still on my screen in front of me. Uh, we have robe and rob so robe becomes oh, rob yes. r-o-b-e becomes r-o-b now this is a very good game if there are any teachers watching this is a very good game that you can play in class so with your students in the classroom this is a really good game because it gets them thinking about other words and how to associate words not just by their meaning but the way in which they are spelt so this is actually a game i used to play in my classrooms in china with my young students and also the adults as well so you can actually play this with anyone of any age so don't worry about it don't worry about it you can play it with anyone and it's a great word game lots of people on the live chat saying hello oh also we have tomek says spot and pot oh yes spot becomes pot if you Very if you good. take take the first away do you have another one steve i've i've got one here oh which uh, it's a word that if you take keep taking letters off you end up with five different words this is quite a clever one i thought it was anyway so i didn't make it up but here we go how about this one you keep taking words off the end and you get lots of different words so brandy which is a drink alcoholic drink you take the y off you get brand and then you take the d off you get bran mm -hmm. and then you take the the b off you get ran and then an and then just you're left with a so brandy can you see that yes that's very interesting to all those different words brandy alcoholic drink brand is the, the name of a or, or a brand uh bran is a fiber that you find in food yeah uh, ran is uh the past tense of run yes and uh an is is naming something in particular like an apple an apple and then just you're left with a and so that can also be used as describing something or naming something a tree yes a door a door that's great i like the way you've gone from brandy yeah and every single word that you've listed underneath also is a word that's good thank you very much steve i enjoyed that so like we have one we have the live chat ah here it is we've got it on there now so lots of people on the live chat we can actually display the live chat simona says train rain ran very similar to yours by the way steve train rain ran an and finally a or ah brilliant yes very good thank you simona for that thank Al you also we have from amanda we have cute and if you take the e away you end up with cut 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 we don't want any cuts wang hello wang how are you today bite you take the e 
away and it becomes bit now that's very interesting because bit is the past tense of byte or a computer uh, uh, that's something to do with computers isn't it a bit yes oh of course yes a small uh, small piece of memory a uh, part of memory is yes. bit very good well done mr steve i didn't know you knew i'm not just a pretty face i didn't mr. know Duncan. you knew so much about computers <laughs> <laughs> my goodness I'm, i know the words i have no idea what they mean i'm very impressed very impressed indeed <laughs> <laughs> thanks for that steve um i've just noted i've just seen one here i've got one more here because your your camera is called a sony yes so ny if you take the y off you get sun oh yes sony as in the the manufacturer of cameras so you have Electrical equipment sony you take the y and you end up with sun i don't know what where sony comes from i think it's actually the name of the person who created the company i might be wrong there we only have four minutes left and then we are going but first of all mr steve has to do something so the question today what common action has been banned on the chinese internet lots of people have given their answers they've said nudity I don't think nudity oh, got, or no, being naked. Oh, no, okay. no, please, Steve, don't take your clothes off. We we aren't covered for that. I, I genuinely do not know what this is. No, I haven't told you. But this is something that I know for a fact has been banned from being done, being performed. It is an action you can't do anymore. I've agreed to do it. I feel a little apprehensive. So if you look underneath the polar bear turn around slightly without yes. destroying the studio look under the polar bear take the polar bear away <laughs> here we go and my will, career going down this you will find the thing and just just take it away oh, steve the whole thing just just no just take the polar bear away <laughs> oh my god uh, talking oh, about right. talking about dim things <laughs> <laughs> I'll, ha I'll yes. hang on to this that's it it's underneath Steve yes I can see it please hurry up it's a tissue yes unwrap the thing oh now this Wasn't is expecting the th that this is the thing <laughs> that you are not allowed to do on Chinese internet eat a banana you now have to peel the banana all oh, right seductively <laughs> well just eat it shall i peel it like a human being would peel it or shall i peel it how a monkey would peel a banana because human beings we tend to uh, peel it from here but monkeys peel it from here really i didn't know that apparently yeah so i'm going to peel it from here okay though well I'm you are a monkey. monkey today you are a bit of a cheeky monkey sometimes there we go so this How'd is the like this? Th so if if mr steve was now on the chinese internet he would actually get arrested and locked up why is that then mr duncan go on do it have i got to eat it do it i've put already it. had one banana today put it in your mouth you know you can get uh, potassium poisoning if you have too many bananas okay just just it. there it is All around. <laughs> hmm. that's it yeah so if you if you put a banana in your mouth if you <laughs> eat a banana on chinese internet live you will get closed down so right now i so i can never now appear on chinese uh live television that's or internet it or we anything. are we are now officially banned although youtube is blocked in china already so mm. it might not make much difference so that's it's it a that's nice, it. perfectly ripe banana it, it looks lovely even though i don't like bananas you can't bananas have a lot of the mineral potassium in them potassium mm. which is essential for your heart to okay work properly but you're only supposed to have about three bananas a week otherwise you get too much potassium building okay. up in your blood well, well please don't don't eat any more of that banana because That's i don't i don't want today. you having i don't want you having a medical emergency in the studio it would make it would make very good live uh english it would <laughs> I, i'm not sure how much english we would get if you were unconscious though 
let's it, put that back it might actually be a, an improvement apparently potassium equals K, is it kalium or kalium uh it's got the uh, uh, the atomic symbol k that's it apparently um, potassium equals kalium i don't know what that is kalium i don't know what that which is which then equals k so yes as you said it's the uh, on the periodic table potassium is k k so that must be the reason why it is before we go that polar bear's female by the way the polar bear is female how do you know i just had a look when i put it back on the table sorry but i i just had to the mystery idioms here come the answers to today's mystery idioms always very popular the mystery idioms so here are the answers <laughs> I love the way Mr. Steve utters your name. Yes. Do you mean <laughs> he says it with derision? I think it's probably the fact that I call you Mr. Duncan. Yes. Which is a bit odd. I think you say it, though, almost with regret. You say, Mr. Duncan, Mr. Duncan. It's almost like as if you regret having to say it. <laughs> Do I? Yes, I think so. Mystery idioms. Here is the answer to the first one work around the clock work around the clock the meaning a very long period of productivity or labor that goes on through both the day and night to finish something on time you might have to work around the clock a very long period of productivity or labor you work around the clock and the second one this is one that many people got right congratulations to those who did guess it right this is a very popular one and it is burn the candle at both ends many people got this right the meaning to not get enough sleep to go to bed very late and get up very early the next day can be described as burning the candle at both ends sometimes I burn the candle at both ends do you ever do that Steve oh what well, I have been known to do that God. Um, do you like my hat it looks very good is, is this your new is this your new wig it's very cool it feels very cool I just thought and oh don't say anything to mr. Duncan I'm going to put this banana skin on the studio floor because you know what happens when you leave banana skins on the floor people slip up on them <laughs> oh, 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 i'm going to throw it over there yeah <laughs> don't say anything to mr duncan the only problem with that plan is that i'm here and i can hear everything you're saying what oh, never mind that's it there is no more time we are out of time time, time has beaten us unfortunately so thanks steve but we will be here next week live on christmas eve so mr steve will be dressed maybe as santa claus or maybe the fairy from the top of the christmas tree Liz. i don't think so. so i thought you said you were go you were going to be a big fairy next week no okay I'm a big fairy all the time no no that's not true no <laughs> maybe i'll maybe i'll have a little magic wand <laughs> maybe i'll be dressed as an elf <laughs> i think we'll just stick with your banana we'll I mean, we'll just yeah. we'll just have your banana maybe your banana will make a return just, next uh, week walk this way mr duncan i know, you know what just, you're trying you're trying you come over here now you're trying to get me to slip on that banana i know what you're doing <laughs> apparently right. oh, apparently according to amanda apparently oh i think maybe amanda is making a joke uh maybe it is a new fashion treatment to learn faster to to put banana peel on your head i'm not sure about that i think it's just mr steve mr steve's had a very busy 24 hours he actually went to a concert last night to perform and he had no idea what the concert was or, or what they were going to actually sing that's what mr steve does at the weekend he does crazy things like that 
I'm living on the edge. Living you s- on the edge. The, you're, you're living by the seat of your pants. I love that expression. And that is where we'll leave it today. Oh. We'll see you, Mr. Steve. We'll see you next Sunday. We might be with you during the week because we have to put the big Christmas tree up. So we might be doing a live stream on Wednesday, putting up the Christmas tree. We will see what happens. I'm doing a few other things, maybe. If not, Do if not, Christmas. if not, Mr. Steve, I will see you next Sunday, Christmas okay. Eve. And I hope everyone will be here as well. So see you later, Steve. See you later. Are you going to fade me out or do you want me to sort of slink, slink down under the camera? Just stay where you are. Stay the way you are. I'll just just read my car magazine. Okay then. Oh. Well, I think I'll get one of those. And that that was Mr. Steve live on YouTube. He will be back next week. I'm not sure what he'll be wearing. Maybe he'll be dressed like Santa Claus or maybe something else. Maybe Rudolph. That would be good, wouldn't it? Mr. Steve dressed as a reindeer. Thank you very much for your company. We are going now. I hope you have enjoyed today's lesson. It's been great being with you. Thanks for your live chat. Thanks for your input. Thanks for getting involved. And I will see you next week. I'm going to leave you with something rather nice. I'm going to leave you with the view of the snow and also me feeding the birds on behalf of mr steve thank you for watching this is mr duncan in the birthplace of english saying thank you for joining me for the past two hours and i will see you next sunday and maybe on wednesday putting up the christmas tree see you very very soon and of course you know what's coming next yes you do to tar for now.